You're locked in to Independent Grind on Dash Radio. Tune in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern for the latest hip-hop news, music, and interviews. Independent Grind only on Dash Radio, baby. Tech 9! All right, we are here with Junior yeah. of the one and only Common Kings. How you how you doing? Today, yo, man? yo. Doing good, do good, man. Now, uh, you, guys are, you guys are on tour right now. Where are you, where are you currently at? Yeah, we're on our way. We just left uh, Seattle um, on our way to Utah, uh, Salt Lake City, for a show tonight. Um, Broken Crowns Tour is still in session with uh, the big bro, Modest Yahoo. Um, yeah. How's that been so far? It's been a crazy experience, man. Like we we've we've done a lot of shows that were in markets that we're yeah, we're not used to doing. So we've been coming across new like genuine new fans, you know. Um, <laughs> you were touring with uh, with with Mayday earlier in the year. Um, that yeah, was like your, sort of your own tour. Do you notice a difference between when you're touring as the headliner versus like you know someone with Modest Yahoo? Yeah, the the demographic is definitely different, but like mm-hmm. the, the the um fans that come out, but um all in all, like they're they're receptive, you know, for for us and um yeah, it's been um it's been great with with um, honest, but um doing the headlining shows are are a lot crazy for us, you know. We we have a solid fan base, um. They they always come out the party, so it's a it's a lot less chaotic or a lot more mellow during this tour for uh, you know being an opening band or for the modest tour as opposed to doing a headlining run. That run with <clears throat> with Mayday in uh, earlier this year in March was crazy. We we've never gotten to work with them, you know, and and we we've heard of them and. Uh, being on tour with them, it, it was like perfect. It was a perfect blend of of music. You know, their their high energy made a um, super artistic people, like creative. You know what I mean? So like, and you can tell it comes out across in their music. So yeah, it's it's super cool to see you uh, working with Mayday <laughs> so much this year. Um, I feel like one tour resulting in like you know three different tracks is, is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, exactly. Obviously, Sorry, Pretender and, and System were sort of like Mayday led, but this new one, Today's a New Day, is sort of your guys spearheading that. What made Mayday the right fit? Did you make it with them in mind? Can you sort of tell us a little how this one came about? Oh, sorry. No, I'm saying that uh, they, they brought that song to life. Um, uh, with, with uh, you know, with their, with their, with their lines and their, their verses, it was, it was really dope. <laughs> Did you all make this one with them in mind, or like, did they did they come about with the feel of it? How'd you how'd you decide to loop Mayday in on this one? Yeah, you know what we've um, after our tour together, we've always I mean, we jumped on a couple of their records, and we definitely um, were looking for a song that uh, you know that we felt could we could do together that made you know that made sense, and uh, uh, you know that one just that one just when when we created that one, that one just make, made so much sense to have them jump on. Uh, we started that one out, out in California and we've been going back and forth. And we had just actually finished, um, I think cutting, uh, JR just finished cutting vocals on two of the, two of the songs that we did with them. Um, uh, system and, uh, pretender. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we were like, two, we need, you know, we haven't done collabs. Like all of our songs that we've released, um, till now there's only been one collab, um, and so, um, after this, our first album, um, we wanted to reach out and have a little bit more, you know, do, do a couple more collabs. And so, um, they were definitely top on our list because, you know, hanging out with them, going on tour, they're good people and they're just talented as hell. Yeah. I feel like your guys' fan base could probably speak to each other and like each other's music. Um, how did you guys come oh, about yeah, Mayday or, you know, like when was your first introduction to them? Honestly, our first introduction to them was when uh, we were, you know, we we're planning for our um, Lost in Paradise tour, and uh, you know, a couple, couple of different acts, you know, uh, were presented to us, and we wanted to definitely go a little bit different as far as like our our whole run and uh, bring something different to our audience. 
from from what we always you know uh, run with um, as far as like when we go on tour. And uh, we had never taken a, a, a hip hop act with us on the road before, and we just felt like it would you know it was dope. We listened to their music, uh, and I thought they were I thought they were fire. So um, and they were down. You know they were available, so you know we went out. And then it just from the first day that we linked up, it just it it, it definitely made so much sense. After we got to get to know them and we watched their show, uh, you know because they put on one killer show, and then they're just you know at the end of the day they're just good people. And so really, when it comes down to it, uh, you know good people win. <laughs> yeah. No, they definitely are good dudes. Um, I've seen your, actually catching that show, the Lost in Paradise tour, um, something that I loved about your guys' set is the way, you said you're, you know, don't really go into hip-hop too much, but you guys do bring in that hip-hop feel, um, sort of, you know, doing your own spin yes. on hip-hop songs. So I guess, how'd you guys decide to want to do that? And like, how'd you in, uh, incorporate that into your sets? Oh, man, we blame it all on Dre. <laughs> 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 Come on, we we're California and then, you know, like California love. I, all of us, you know, we grew up listening to, to NWA and, and, uh, Dr. J, we all have, you know, the freaking chronic album. And, and so, um, but you know, none of us, none of us rap. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of like our alter ego, right? Um, if we could, uh, we would, but we don't. So, um, we make, uh, you know, love songs <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, more of the softer stuff. Can you tell me, like, can you tell us, like, what the state of reggae is in right now? Now, I think the state of reggae is evolving. I mean, we just got nominated uh, for the for this year's Grammys. Yep, congratulations! And, I mean, that we is just, just saw that. that is just crazy. Yeah, so that to us nuts. You know, I mean, we're we're you know obviously we're super excited, super humbled by it. But that just tells you the state of reggae is evolving because we're not, um, you know, in in the reggae world. People, they claim us, but, you know, there's some festivals where we're not invited because they don't think we're reggae enough. Really? Uh, and, uh, you know, but in the in the pop world, we're the greatest reggae band that's <laughs> performed, you know? We go on, <laughs> we're going on tour with, like, you know, like Fifth Harmony and, and uh, Megan Trainor, and they think we're the greatest reggae band ever, you know? So uh, it, it, it's crazy. We're getting the recognition that we're, you know... Uh, getting and I, I believe that it's evolving into to a point at the point maybe not this, maybe not next year or, or the year after but soon they're going to have different they're going to have to have different categories for reggae just like they have different categories of pop and hip hop mm -hmm. um, you know and 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 R and B for for the Grammys because there's there's definitely a lot of you know cross nation for uh, for how reggae is evolving you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think right now it's it's in a really good place, you know. Ever since uh, ever since Sublime came out, uh, he's kind of you know they've kind of opened the door to more of that Cali reggae sound, and then now, you know, uh, us Polynesians are putting our spin on it, uh, and so it's 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 going to continue to evolve, and I think that's exciting. And you mentioned Sublime, and they're obviously one of my favorites, and I think that's perfect to sort of say, like, oh, yeah. I, don't know, I feel like I feel like great music is just great music. Like, at the end of the day, you know, like, talk about Mayday, they bring in different elements. You guys are giving them a radio feel. Sublime has that reggae feel, but also has so much hip-hop I mean, feel. There's so like, much reggae. Yeah, there's so much reggae in, 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 in mainstream music today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're touching on it, you know? And, I mean, people are like, ah, that's not reggae, that's, like, watered down. But, I mean the elements are there. It's the, the, the influences are there. It's, it's starting to get woven into mainstream songs, you know, dance from dance hall to freaking Ariana Grande's what's her something all day song, you know? Um, but it's, 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 it's in there, you know, it's in there and it's, it's getting, um, there's, there's definitely heavy influence mm -hmm. and it's, it, you know, it's a great place for reggae. So sort of taking it back to uh, today's a new day. I guess didn't you guys spend? Didn't I see you guys were in Miami with you met up with Mayday in Miami? Yeah. So our our schedule worked out, you know, uh, so that we actually had two days off in between hey. shows, you know. And we're like we're looking at our schedule, and then it just so happened that Mayday also was just coming off of their tour, and they had the same two days off. I mean you want to talk about like perfect timing, you know, those guys are touring, 
those guys tour way more than we do, you know? And so <laughs> for our schedule to, to align and have the same two days off was, uh, it was pretty amazing. So it, yeah, it's definitely meant to be for us to link up and, and, uh, shoot that video. Oh, you shot a video for it. <laughs> yeah. Cause we'd already, the, we'd already cut the song. We shot the video for it. Um, and, uh, I know it looks like we're all in there <laughs> just making it, but we, We'd actually been going back and forth. That's because our schedule didn't line up for us to actually be in the studio together. So we wrote the song out here while we were, you know, and, you know, they, they did their lines while they were on tours and then sent it back to us. And that's kind of what the same thing we did with uh, System and Pretender. We were also on tour uh, and cutting vocals in hotel bo- hotel rooms, mm-hmm. um, you know, with our little, you know, <laughs> Pro Tools rig, whatever. And then, uh, and then we would send the, you know, send the, uh, the vocals to them and then, you know, they had it mixed and everything. So, um, that's kind of how we were working, you know, thank God for technology today. Um, <laughs> we, we don't always have to be in the same room mm-hmm. to create fire. <laughs> Good. You guys got in the same room for the video. No, that should be, that should be a lot so, of fun. Yeah. That's the part. Yeah. So we definitely were like, dude, we can't, we have to have, you know, we wanted to shoot a video. We're trying to think of our schedule. That's, that's why it was just such a, you know, godsend that, that we had the same two days off. So we were like, yeah, this is meant to be. So we flew out, um, of our videographer from Salt Lake city. Um, and he came and spent three days with us, four days with us. Just to wrap it up real quick. You guys are going on tour in the UK shortly after this black, uh, broken crowns tour with the original whalers. How did that come about? Yeah. And have you guys been, a, a, you know, like overseas a lot, like just, break that all down um so our first our first trip into europe was um last summer we went out well we opened up for sean paul in germany um uh, and that came about you know because uh, um just through mutual friends you know one of the bigger one of the big promoters out there in germany uh was out here visiting some friends and then his friends connected with our friends you know so the conversation started and met us and he's like ah i know you guys don't have don't know anybody or have no music out there or attraction, but I like you guys. I want to bring you out to Germany. So that's how that came about. Um, and then, um, with the, with this one, with the whalers, uh, same, it was same thing. It just so happens that our booking agents also the same booking agent for the whalers, the original whalers. And, uh, we had been, you know, been telling them and saying like, Hey, you know, we would, we're really interested in going to, uh, to UK you know, if it makes sense, you know, try and fit us in wherever we can. And the Whalers don't really, you know, they don't really, they don't really tour, I guess, with op- opening acts. So they just kind of pick whoever's local. Um, and uh, so they, they presented us to them and they're like, yeah, of course. You know, so then that's how that came about, you know. So it's definitely uh, one degree of separation for h- how we're able to get, uh, you know, some of the tours that we're on, you know. Pays to pays to be good to the people that are good to other people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's awesome, man. Thanks, yeah. thanks so much for your time, and uh, we're looking forward to for two days in Noga. And like, is there, is there any more info you can give us about the album? Sort of when to expect it? When um, when we might get some more off of uh, either you made it or just you guys? Um, we have you know we have our new single that's dropping. We have we have like uh, several new songs that we're looking to drop as well. Um, to, and you know, in all honesty, to be honest, this whole, um, Grammy nomination is kind of caught us off guard. So it, <laughs> it might change a few things. Yeah. So, cause, um, you know, cause now, you know, people are going to, the first thing you're going to do now is look at our newest body of work. And so we don't want to, we definitely don't want to cloud everything. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see, but we have like, um, and, and a new album that's probably like, a couple of songs short of, of being completed. Um, that's, that was slated to drop about August of next year. This is the genius, Chris Calico. Cali baby. Letting you know you're tuned in to tech nine's independent grind on dash radio. Ah, uh-huh.